Computerized backtesting has been a real big boon for us traders. At the click of a few buttons, we can evaluate new trading strategies and ideas across different instruments and time frames and through optimization, determine the strategy parameters that yield the best results. And for those new to trading, the meaning of backtesting is simply the process of testing a trading strategy on relevant historical data to ensure its viability before the trader risks any actual capital. Now, unfortunately, with computerized backtesting, we also need to deal with the curse of curve fitting. And curve fitting occurs when the strategy parameters are tuned so that they produce optimized results for the specific set of historical data that was tested. With any other sort of testing data, the results might be radically different. For example, we might run a test over a period that saw a huge price swing due to a major news event. A curve fitted strategy may be tuned to capture the maximum profit from those swings, thus inflating its overall results. And you take away that swing and the same parameters would yield drastically reduced or even negative results. This image here shows what a curve fitted system would look like. To the left of the vertical line, we see the optimized results, and to the right, we see the subsequent system performance using the same values. After initial run-up, the system just fell apart, and all the initial gains are lost, as you can see once the equity curve line hit its peak. A curve fitting is a potentially destructive process, and you must find ways to eliminate it during your testing of any trading system, or you really run the risk of trading an inferior system. There are three backtesting strategies that we can use to alleviate the curve fitting issue. We can optimize one variable at a time and look for ranges of variable values that all produce profitable results, then pick a value from the middle of the range. This value may not have the optimal result, but ensures that small variances will still be profitable. We can also optimize over several different historical data sets and identify those strategy variables that produce profitable results across all of them. Look for overlaps and select a variable mix that has a good result in each of the test periods. We can also optimize the variables on a historical set of data and then validate that they continue to perform well by applying them to a different set of data. This is called out of sample testing. Now, of course, you can apply all three of them to your strategy, but right now we're just going to focus on the out of sample testing. In out of sample testing, we separate the available historical test data into two sets. The first set we're going to use for the computerized back testing and the optimization. This is called the in sample period. The optimized test results are then applied to the remaining untested data set referred to as the out of sample period. Now the out of sample data can come from the beginning of the historical data or from the end, although we typically we will going to use the most recent data for the out of sample testing. Now the ratio of in sample to or out of sample typically ranges from 2 to 1 to 4 to 1. So in other words, 33% to 20% of the total data will be reserved for the out of sample test. This image shows a two to one split applied to six months of daily data. Performing an out of sample test in TradeStation, for example, which is a really powerful piece of backtesting software, it's really easy. You begin by adding your strategies and setting the optimization parameters. For this example, let's use three of the strategies that come with TradeStation. You can see the optimization parameters in the figure here. Now, once that's done, before we run the optimization, we click on the advanced settings button to open the advanced setting windows as you can see here, the advanced settings window is where you define the size of the out of sample period as a percent of the total historical data set. Note that you can separate out of sample periods, one at the beginning and one at the end of the data block. Alternatively, you could also specify dates for defining the out of sample periods. And for simplicity, set aside the last 30% of data for the out of sample testing. And after you run your optimization, you can pull up the strategy performance report to see how well the system performed overall and in the out of sample period. At the top of the report, you can click the drop down menu, select all data in sample or out of sample to filter the results for the data period. You can see the drop down menu here where we place a red vertical line to show the overall results in sample to the left of the line, out of sample to the right of the line. Now compare this equity curve with the first equity curve that appeared earlier. We can see that the trading system continued to perform well, unlike our first test, even after the data optimization period. And this gives us great confidence in trading it going forward. This approach works well to test the robustness of the system. A drawback is that testing is performed over a limited period of time. And during that testing period, the market may have experienced different levels of price volatility or prices may have changed significantly and the strategy parameters don't reflect this evolution. In practice, a more accurate assessment of overall performance will look at the results of consecutive or rolling out of sample tests. This is called walk forward testing 
and this will probably be covered in an upcoming video. Options trading has become very popular over the last few years. NetPick's own options guru Mike has put together a hot list of some of the best names to trade in the options market. You can click here and download your free hot list to see what names Mike has been piling up the winners with.